Hello CIS 30E. In this video, I'm going to illustrate how to do lap 9. We are going to parallels. Uh, we're going to use parallel to write our py Python program. So we're going to parallelize the Python program and we're going to apply Amdahl's law, which covers in this chapter. Um, now you are going to re be required to use the Linux virtual machine like Ubuntu that we have used in the past. If you don't have a Linux virtual machine, you need to refer to the Power Lab to create your Ubuntu virtual machine. You do not need to install the KDE desktop um, as what we've done in the past. You just need to create an Ubuntu virtual machine that needs to be more than 20 gigs. So I would give it 40 gig of hard drive um, or the virtual drive when you create the virtual machine. So once you have your virtual machine up and running, after you open your virtual box, um, also making sure that we are going to allocate the number of processors that we're going to use for this particular program. It needs to have more than one core. So you are going to click the settings. You are going to go to set to system and then the processor tab. Make sure that you glide this over to more than one processor. So if you have four, cores you are going to use at least two core um, recommended that we want to use more than one core for this particular program like what we've done in the prior lab now you need to do this before you start your virtual machine if you have started your virtual machine make sure you shut it down and do this prior to the start so in my virtual machine i am going to go ahead and open up my terminal and you can click the all apps, click terminal, and here's your terminal. We're going to use nano text editor in order to write our program. So if you refer to the lab instructions, you can name your file anything you want. Um, and in this case, I am. So in my case, I have named my file um, nano parallel merge1.py so I'm going to go ahead and open up my nano and give it a file name and make sure that we have a .py extension for the Python then you are going to write the program um, so just a quick rundown for the program we are going to use the concurrent features as we talked about that last week where we can implement features in our program um, we are going to also create a pool for your processes or your workers and we're going to use the process pool executor class along with the as completed um, as completed method um, from the concurrent features then we are going to import in multiprocessing and we're going to use the identifier MP um, for this library we are going to measure time, so we are going to import in time. Now, in the program, there are two parts to it, just like before. Um, in our prior lab, we are going to do a sequential implementation to see how fast the program would be. And we are going to do a parallel implementation, so you will have an, the definition for the function for the sequential and a function for parallel. So in the sequential, I simply want to do a sum, and this is a running sum program of my um, range. So I'm going to return um, from the range low and high. And so simply we're going to generate random numbers and we're going to sum it up and we're going to measure the time. Now for the parallel implementation in the function, you simply are going to define the function and again we are going to do low and high and then we are going to create a pool um, and in the process pool executor this is going to be the executor that's going to be able to work with the futures where you are going to store um, the result for each of the process or the sub process that's going to be providing the sum we are going to return the sum and we're going to store it. We're going to store the sum into the futures. So in the if statement, that's what you see for the else. 
we're going to have a base case that's going to be your threshold. So if it is high and low, high subtract low is going to be less than um, 10,000, then it's going to return the sum of your range. Then otherwise, we are going to have a middle point where we are going to take high and low and we're going to divide it by two. And so that's going to split the index into half. And this is where we would partition our data. And that will be one approach in how we would be able to um, use parallel processing to be able to execute. On the left side, we are going to identify the partial sum of from the middle to the left. And we are going to use the parameter low, mid, and pool. On the right side, we are going to create another partial sum. That's going to be from the middle to the right. And we're going to combine them together. So we would have two partitions that sum up. And it's going to add up to be a total uh, value, which is the overall sum. <clears throat> then simply in the main, we are going to make sure that we um, initialize one for the eval run. Our sum is going to be the value of um, a million. And then for our print, we're simply going to call the sequential, or we're going to define sequential result, and we're going to call the sequential sum, and we are going to provide the sum value. In the sequential time, we are going to initialize it as zero because we are going to have it enter the loop. And for the loop, we will have a four range loop and we're going to count the performance for the time. In the sequential sum, it's going to give us the number, the value for our sum in se using sequential approach. And then for the sequential time, we're going to increment um, the counter and we're going to subtract the start. So this is just going to give you the measurement of the time for the sequential. In the parallel implementation, we're going to print that out and we're going to use a similar approach in measuring the time. We're going to have the parallel result and then we are going to count up the amount of time that it's going to take for the parallel implementation as it adds up the value for the sum. And then subsequently, we are going to have an exception in the case where the result doesn't match up. So if that's the case, it's going to end the program and it's going to raise the exception where it's going to print that the result from sequential and parallel does not, they do not match. Then lastly, we are going to print the time for our sequential calculation and the average time for the parallel calculation. And we are going to also print out the speed up and the efficiency. And as you learn for Amdahl's law, we are looking at the speed up, how fast it would be in um, compare between the parallel and the sequential. And then the efficiency, we're going to then um, provide the proficiency based on the CPU count. And at, recall that you set the number of cores, um, so you want to be able to establish that. So after we have written our program, we simply are going to, let me lock back in. We are going to save it by pressing Control X and yes and enter. And so we are going to run the program by using Python 3 command. And we are going to use the name that we have for our file. And this might take about a minute or two. It's going to evaluate the sequential implementation and the parallel implementation as we have that printed out. Then we are going to have the results. So here, as you can see, I have 
the average sequential time is um, 974.97 milliseconds. The parallel time is this. And when you run it different time, you're going to see that it's going to be a little bit different um, each time that you run it. My speed up is going to be 0 0.20 and my efficiency is 4.91%. And notice the efficiency is going to be very close to the, my number of cores. So as I allocated four core, um, I would see that it's going to be roughly around there. So after you have run your program, take a screen capture. And then what you want to do is you want to calculate, you want to note, note the average sequential time. So record that and you are going to record the average parallel time and also the speed up and the efficiency. So we wanted to verify to see if the program output is going to give us what we need um, from Amdahl's law. And then we also wanted to put down the number of processor that we allocated in the settings of our virtual machine. And in my case, I have four. Then um, for G, we are going to find the total number of time for our program so you would take the value the value from um, here which is the sequential time and the parallel time and you would add that up once you have that total you are going to take the sequential time divided by the total to give you the percentage of the program that will be sequential and then you are again going to take the parallel time divided by the total time to give you the percentage of the program that will be parallelized. So make sure that you record that calculation result. Then when you look at Amdahl's law as covered in this chapter, you would use the percentage that you have and use the Amdahl's law calculation equation to be able to determine your speed up given your processor and the percentage. Once you have the result, you want to match it up to see if it's the same as the program. Now for the next question, it says given the number of allocated cores from 9F, is your speed up value um, from the program output match with the expected value. So if I allocated four core, I should see roughly around um, four, four point something speed up. So um, is for efficiency, is that going to be what I'm expecting? So what you, um, what you would see is you would note the efficiency, which is here. How is that going to be matching up with the number of core I allocated based on the speed up? So make sure that we are going to be able to um, apply the calculation for Amdahl's and then looking at the output for our program and see if it's going to match up. And this concludes my video for lab nine. Uh, let me know if you have any questions since I'm not able to do Zoom. This lab is fairly short, but it does apply the theory that we talked about and it shows you how you can implement um, Python time uh, integration for time measurement for Amdahl's law. Thank you for watching the video.